by re reminding people like what the you know the mission of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. Um, <laughs> uh, um, as I think uh, you guys know, it's incredibly important that we move to a sustainable world sooner rather than later. The sooner we do it, the better it, the better it is. And <laughs> and it's important to to show that. Uh, that any, any type of car can go electric. Um, we showed that you could make a compelling sports car with the Roadster, and that could go electric. Um, and we, we showed that you could do it with a sedan, and now we're gonna show that you can do it with an SUV. So, so we, we're gonna start off with uh, the, what, what's actually most important uh, for, a, for a car, which is safety. Um, so the, if, 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 you're, if you're driving, you're carrying your friends and family around, there's really nothing that's more important than safety. Um, so first and foremost, the car's gotta, gotta keep uh, you and, and uh, the ones you love uh, safe and, uh, and protect you under any circumstance you can imagine. So... <laughs> So, the, uh, they, they have the Model X. Um, I'm going to talk a lot more about the details of the car, but I'm going to start off with safety. Um, so, the, w with the Model X, we've created the safest SUV ever. Uh, it's the first uh, SUV that's five stars in every category. So, and I, I thought I'd just uh, uh, explain what does five stars mean. Because five stars is not technically a statistical number. It's uh, sort of a, you know, a, a rough reference point. It's, it, and what it actually means is it, it describes the, the probability of a serious injury in a high-speed accident. So you start off with sort of two star, three star, four star, five star, and they, they, they go down in 5% um, in, in increments. A four star would be a 15% probability of injury in a, in a high-speed accident. Uh, five star would be 10%. Uh, hypothetically, if there was a sixth star, it would be at 5%. Um, and we've been able to get with the Model X uh, what, an, an expected rating of about 6.5%. So... And so let me explain how we, how we get to uh, such a low probability of injury. And I, it goes to the design of the car and the, the fundamental architecture. So starting off with the, the, the frontal, uh, if, if sort of what, what happens in a, in, in a, in a frontal uh, crash, uh, this is where most, uh, high, when, where most injuries and deaths occur is in a frontal, frontal crash. And normally with, uh, with a gasoline car, you've got a large steel engine block in front. And so in a high-speed impact, that engine block compresses into the passenger compartment and obviously causes uh, damage to the people that are sitting there. With, um, the, with the Model X, there is no such, there's no such thing. So um, we, we have a small electric motor that's down low by the battery pack. And the net effect is that you've got a much larger uh, distance for the crumple zone. So it, uh, it's really t taking impact energy is about force over distance. And if you've got a longer distance, uh, you, you, you can actually distribute that force um, over that longer distance and have a, a better deceleration and not impact the cabin. So uh, in the case of the frontal, frontal zone, you've got, uh, it, it's, you've got something that's the equivalent of, like if you were to jump out of a tall building into a pool, 
um, it's the difference between jumping into a pool or a pool with a rock in it. So the, you don't want the pool with the rock in it. So then going on to a, a side, uh, side impact, um, the, the Model S and the Model X um, are about half of the next best in the SUV class. So the X is... Uh, So the side pole intrusion um, is only 215 millimeters in the, in the Model X. Um, and that's compared to the next best uh, SUV, which is about double that number. Um, and let's see what that looks like in pictures. So this is what it looks like with a side. This is the actual side pole test for the Model X uh, compared to the next best SUV in the world. Yeah. I mean, this is the difference between life and death. This is a really big difference. <laughs> so, and then, look, now, let's, now let's look at the rollover uh, numbers. So, the, the Model X, uh, because it has a low center of mass with the battery pack and the floor pan, um, has half the rollover propensity of any SUV or minivan. So the probability of a rollover injury is substantially reduced. And you can see this in the architecture. We start with the pack. Um, and that, that pack provi it provides a stiffening member for the whole car. It provi provides a very uh, strong foundation for the whole car, lowering the center of mass um, and serving as a load transfer medium to the rest of the vehicle. So uh, whereas a, a gasoline car really just has thin corrugated sheet metal at, at the base and can't transfer the load in a side impact. Um, so we'll just show you the rest of the car building up. You see the motors and the chassis. It gives you a sense for the core architecture of the car. Now, of course, the, the, the best uh, protection is not to get into an accident at all. So the Model X comes standard with active safety, which includes uh, automatic emergency braking and, and side, collision, um, uh, uh, side collision avoidance. So the car will actually use the camera and the radar to automatically brake before there's an accident and it will use the ultrasonic sensors around the side of the car to steer you away from a side collision. And these are active all the time, and it's just a standard feature in the car. Mm. Now the third thing, which is sort of topical, um, is, is uh, air safety. Now we, we designed the car well before recent events. <laughs> so, so it just happens, just happens to have a, you know, there's recent events have um, illustrated the importance of, of air safety. Um, and we have with the Model X the first, uh, the first true HEPA filter in a car. So we, and, and why, why is it important to have a, a particulate filter? Why is it important to have a, um, a gas filter in the car? Um, it's because this translates to a real, a real change in life expectancy. So these, these are the most conservative numbers we could find on the internet, like the most conservative. They go way worse than this. This is basically the least bad thing that would happen if you lived in these cities. So, and, and now let's take a look at the filters themselves. You can, I, I want to show you just how much of a difference this is. The, 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 the top... The top one is our primary air filter. The, the one on the left and the bottom is our secondary air filter. The one on the right is a normal car air filter. I think we've got some of those here. So th this, is, this is what a normal car filter looks like. It's really, really quite small. Um, this, is the, this is the primary air filter of the Model X. And this is the, sec this is the secondary air filter. Our secondary air filter is bigger than the primary air filter of a typical car. So, the, and, and not, is, not only is it 10 times larger area, but the, the quality of the filter is greater. So, that translates to a, a several hundred fold improvement in the filtration capability. It is 300 times better at filtering bacteria, 500 times better at allergens, 700 times better at sort of smog, and 800 times better at filtering viruses. And, and this is on a bad day. So this is the minimum passing grade for, for, 
uh, when it's just operating at its, at, at its worst. So, and, yeah. <clears throat> so the, in addition to, to the, the particle filters, we have three layers of, of active carbon. So we've got uh, one universal adsorbent layer, that's the initial layer. Um, then we've got another activated carbon layer that's meant for acid gases, and another one for alkaline gases. The, the net effect of, of the uh, air filtration system uh, is that you have air cleanliness levels which are comparable to a hospital operating room in the car. And, and, and in fact, when the car is operating, when the car is operating at its uh, at, at maximum capability, so if, if, if you sort of press max, max capability in the car, we can't even detect uh, any viruses or bacteria or spores. So it's like zero come through. So if, 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 there's, ever, if, if there's ever sort of an apocalyptic scenario <laughs> of some kind, <laughs> hypothetically, you just press the bioweapon defense mode button. <laughs> this is a real button. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to be a leader in apocalyptic defense scenarios. Uh, now, uh, so let's move on to the car itself. Like, what, what's cool and fun about the car? Doors and windows. Okay. So, the, you, you're obviously familiar with the, the Falcon Wing door. What we also have is an auto-presenting front door. So. The, the, it will, what it'll do is it'll triangulate uh, my position and detect that I am moving towards the, the front door. It will open the front door without me touching anything. I will sit down and it will close the door like an invisible chauffeur. <laughs> and that, and there, there are a few other features that are hard to they're hard to demo in this exact scenario, but it's something that we worked very hard on is uh, a, a windshield that's a panoramic windshield, so it comes up and over and feels like a hel helicopter cockpit when you're driving. So it gives you unbelievable visibility. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, it's transformative in the driving experience. So you really, when, when you do the test, test drives later tonight, you'll see what I mean. It really, really makes a difference. And then in addition to that, we also have a, um, it's, just, it's a small feature, but an important one, is the ability to blind holster your phone. <laughs> so this, this is like one of those things where you, it's small, but it's important. Uh, instead of having to fiddle with a bunch of wires to uh, plug in your phone, you can basically take it out of your pocket and blind holster it. It'll automatically fit, and there are ad adapters for every variant of, of hyperloop phone. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's open these doors. So the, the, the reason we created these doors uh, was we're, originally we were trying to solve a problem, which is how do you access the third row if you have child seats in the second row? Um, and I, I encountered this problem when I, when I first got to, uh, a gasoline SUV and I had you know, uh, twins. And um, once you put them in the second row, you couldn't access the third row. So we wanted to have an opening that was big enough so that you could do that. So you could have real utility of the third row, um, while even if you have kids seats in the second row. So you basically just press the button. The seats will go forward. And I can step directly in. 
So. It's also important that if, if you have, say, a child seat here, that instead of having to, to cantilever uh, your, your kid um, out in front and sort of put them basically into a small hole, um, you, you can actually just stand right here. You can actually step into the car if you want, and you can just put your child down in the child seat. It makes a huge difference in terms of, of back strain and comfort. So those, those are the two functional reasons, and, uh, and it also looks cool. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's the falcon wing doors. And <laughs> now, obviously a question with the doors is, so how do they fit in tight spaces? Well, we'll show you. Let's bring out the cars. So, so the scenario we're going to show you here is if you've ever been in a parking lot and someone parked real close. So that it's, I don't know if you can see well here, but there's only about uh, a few inches separating the side mirrors um, on each side of the car. So we're going to open the falcon wing doors when there's barely enough room to squeeze between the, t the two cars. So the, the reason it's able to do that um, is because unlike a traditional gullwing door, which is only actuated on a single hinge, uh, the, the, the Model X Falcon wing doors are actuated on two hinges. So it's able to move up and over instead of simply moving out in a broad arc. And moreover, if you compare it to, say, a minivan door, let's open the minivan door here. You can see that it, it, when the minivan door opens, I can't even get through that space. So let's close the minivan door. Now the falcon wing door is open. <laughs> so I, I goal, our goal was to create some, an, an aperture that was more functional than a minivan door, and I think I think the team is, has succeeded. So I think it's, it's, it's the best aperture out there. And just to illustrate um, what it's like in a garage, so you saw what it's like if, if it's tight from a side standpoint, or well, what if you have a low garage? That's one of the most common questions I get about the Model X. The car actually automatically senses what the roof height is. So there are ultrasonic sensors in the, in the roof of the car that calculate the roof height and automatically compute a new opening arc depending upon what the height of the ceiling is and what the side obstacles are.
And we, we actually developed uh, a new uh, ultrasonic sensor that's able to do sonar through metal. So in order to avoid having a, a puck, uh, which is ordinarily needed for, uh, for, for ultrasonic sensors, uh, we thought the, the, the aesthetics of the puck would, would not be good to be in the, because it would have to be in the center of the door. So we actually developed um, an ultrasonic sensor that can literally see through metal. All right. So let's uh, maybe talk a bit more about the second row seats. So no normally second row seats in a car don't get a lot of love. Uh, so let's, let's see, show you what second row seats typically look like in a car. So that's sort of what, that what second row seats normally look like. But when we're, what, particularly when you open something and it's sil silhouetted uh, as it does with the Falcon Wing door, it, it tends to create a halo around the seat. So we put a lot of effort into creating a beautiful seat. And, um, not only is the seat, I think, uh, I, probably the best looking second seat, if that's a <laughs> superlative uh, in, uh, if ever, but it actually provides more functionality because you, um, you have a flat floor and you can uh, stow uh, if, if some things. So if you've got a backpack or a laptop or, or a handbag, you can, st you can stow that under the seat instead of having it at your feet. So it actually provides uh, utility as well as aesthetics. All right. And speaking of utility, let's see what the, mod, what, what the Model X can really carry. So Molex is capable of uh, towing 5,000 pounds. <laughs> so 5,000 5, pounds while carrying seven people and quite a lot of luggage. Yeah. And of course, let's not forget about the front. <laughs> Where's the stroller? Yes, we need the stroller. <laughs> there we go. Do you want to put them in or do you want to carry them out? <laughs> All right. All right. All right, so there you have it. Model X carrying seven, seven people, uh, a 5,000 pound trailer, and I lost count of how many bags, uh, and a stroller. All right, so um, something that we developed with, for the Model X is, like, let's say you want to carry skis, bikes, um, and uh, you want to do that quickly and easily. Uh, we made an accessories hitch uh, that can be put on by a kid in approximately 10 seconds. Thank you. I think that was more like five seconds. So the accessories hitch can carry uh, up to four bikes or up to six sets of skis. And you can close the trunk and have full functionality with the rest of the car. <laughs> so
Skis and snowboards, indeed. And then the final element, of course, is performance. Um, so the, e even the standard version of the uh, Model X uh, has quite high performance. So it's got a the standard version, 90D, has got uh, 257 mile range, all wheel drive, of course, um, and it gets to 60 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds. And then the P90D ludicrous mode. Um, <laughs> I mean, this goes so fast, it's wrong. Um, so do zero to 60, uh, this is an SUV, and it'll do zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. <laughs> All right. All right, so with that, let me, uh, let, let's hand over the post-production cars. All right. All right, so let's see, VIN 6. Hey. Hey, all right. What's up, man? <laughs> Amazing. Hey. Congratulations. Such an awesome job. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> nice license plates. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> All right, it's a uh, Fen Five. <laughs> Car's coming soon. All right. Let's see. Is it okay? Hopefully, the call will be sick here soon. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, and bin four. <laughs> Standing for Sergey. <laughs> All right. Then three. All right. Good to see you. Absolutely. Thanks. Hey. Thank you. All right, and then two. All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. And then, let's see. Then the final one is my car, which uh, is going to be up in a moment. And um, <laughs> I will uh, leave up. I'll, I'll leave that, the, my car, on stage when it arrives um, so that uh, you, can, or you can come and take a, a close look at it and pull around it and that kind of thing. Um, and. Uh, and that's that, really. I hope you have a great night. Uh, enjoy the test drives. Um, and uh, so, like, thank you, and like, thank the, the Tesla team who worked super hard to make this uh, night work. All right, thanks. Have a good night. <laughs>